Hello. Oops. Hello, Hello there. Hi, James. Hiya. Hi, I'm Alfred. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, again, thank you so much anyway for saying yes so many times to being extremely patient and willing. No worries, no worries. How's things going? Uh, you know, <laughs> pandemic aside, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, things are good. Um, I'm just waiting to see how many students will join us uh, today. Sure, 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 and, um, sure. And you're, yeah. and how many other people are on the, the panel? So there are two other people. Um, I can quickly tell you the name. I know uh, one of them um, is Nola. Uh, so Nola is a student of Goldsmiths. So she's a third year um, student in, uh, I think she's doing sociology. Right. And um, she also was a former staff member of uh, Goldsmiths uh, Student Union. So um, she's very nice and you know, a really pleasant person to talk in general with. And um, the other person, Just bear with me a moment. So the other person is Jade Lindo, and um, I believe that she's actually our part-time uh, BME rep for the year. So both of them, uh, both of them, I think, are students. It'll be the um, only lecture that we have, which is um, cool. actually quite good to have people from different sides of the experience. And I think with uh, us now, it's also Tor Arton, and um, they actually submitted a motion for the forum. Basically, the way that the forum works um, is that at the beginning, we're gonna just have a quick discussion with the panelists about the BME attainment gap. Um, when, um, when Nola and Jade also come along, I'll ask you guys if you're go if you would be comfortable with me recording um, the conversation because we were thinking it might be nice to actually share it online, but it's completely up to you and whether you feel comfortable about it, of course. Yeah. Cool, and, cool, cool. No worries. And yeah, basically how it works is you had the discussion before, and then the second section, which you guys don't really, I mean, you can stay if you want to, and uh, you don't have to stay otherwise. Um, it's uh, just the person that submits motions for the forum uh, um, have the opportunity to discuss it. So I believe that um, Tor actually made their motion about the IHRA um, definition of anti-Semitism. So fairly related to what's going on as well with um, um, Israel and Palestine at the moment. So it's uh, <laughs> It, it does relate to a certain extent also with uh, liberation in general. But again, sure. if you guys want to sure. stay along, um, you're welcome to. Sure. Thing with forums um, is uh, sometimes not all students are um, able to come to the forum itself. And that's also why we record it. Just gives them an opportunity to go and see it at a later date. See it at a date. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, just waiting on um, everyone else. And um, I hope your day has been okay so far yeah it's not been too bad I've been really busy so um yeah not too bad um just work working on on some 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 stuff at the moment so yeah, yeah not too bad it, it's a strange time of a uh, year because there's so much to do to wrap things up are you finishing at goldsmiths this year or i actually graduated two years ago um right i see i see yeah. And so what do you do now um, with the uni and stuff? Are you, you, you um, I started, I started as a receptionist last year. Um, right. Oh, cool. Stick though. <laughs> so at the moment I'm kind of doing like many people's jobs without having a necessary. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> brilliant, 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 mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, and, do you, and do you think you'll be on campus next year? That's a great question. Um, really, I guess it depends on the government. Um, we are we're probably going to reopen everything in September if uh, Bojo lets us. Um, yeah, yeah, everything. Go for it. Yeah, it'd be nice because, of course, 
I think students really need them. You know, I, I feel like Unfortunately, not having a space for students to meet up means that it's also more difficult to get them together um, to engage and get involved in democracy in a larger yeah. way, which uh, it is what it is. I mean, I'm sure that also as a lecturer, it's been quite weird. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a very strange year, definitely. The, 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 out of all the years I've been at Goldsmiths, it's definitely been the strangest. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. not like Goldsmiths is a normal university in general. <laughs> no, 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 no. And yeah, I definitely think it, it's it been um, the, the sort of the strangest year. It's been a strange time for a couple of years, but with the, the way that, with the way that the pandemic has affected students, it's, it's been unbelievable in a way, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, I, I think it speaks volume and like as somebody who has to engage with students, like it's my main job to be there for students, but of course you're expecting students to come to you as well. And I find it very worrying that, I mean, it must be so difficult for students at the moment that they feel like even just reaching out is not going to be enough, which, you know, it's, uh, it's just really worrying because it doesn't mean that they're not having problems. It's like the problems are so big that just, they just don't feel like they can be helped. Exactly, exactly. So in a way, you've just got to be as kind as you can. Yeah, absolutely. You can just sympathize and be there for the students. Of course, one always always wants to do more, but as I'm sure we can have a conversation later, there is always the difficulty of um, the society yeah. we live in has so many ways to just put us all down and make it so That's difficult right. to be <laughs> together. One can only try. It seems like more people are joining, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just waiting for the other panelists. They should all come. I imagine that they'll be a bit late, um, but that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And for everybody else who's on the chat, just wanted to say hello to everybody. Yeah. We have a couple of uh, staff members. Um, yeah. We have Sarah as well. Um, hey, sure Jerry, you thank you. For, yeah, we do. We sit on the same racial justice board. Um, Hey, thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure, Sarah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are things? Are you well? I'm, do I'm doing good. It's been a busy um, few weeks, um, like always. We have the committee next week, I think, the Racial Justice yeah. Board Committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People are following me. But you yeah, so there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I hope you appreciate it. It's really good work you guys are doing. You know, yes. it's really good work. It's really good work. I know it might feel, um, it might feel like pushing a rock up a hill or something most <laughs> of the time, but it is really important that that somebody does it. Uh, so well done. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Um, yeah, it, it is difficult, but I think just seeing the small progress sometimes yeah. it reminds us why we're doing it as a union. Um, and there's a lot of progress that's happened over the last couple of months. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Hope you're well. I know it's been a hard time for a lot of academics. This yeah, academic. I mean, it's just been very different. It's just been a very different time. Um, but if I'm honest, it's not, it's not been anywhere near as hard for me as it has been for my students. You know, you know, I've got one guy you know, I'm speaking to him yesterday morning in Pakistan. He's been there for a year, right? Do you know mm. what I mean? And it's hard, especially when you you didn't sign up to do some online course, right? That's you know, no, no. And Goldsmith really isn't that prepared to deliver an online course to a guy in <laughs> Pakistan. You know, we're just not. You know, so yeah. it's been really tough. You know, supervision and for his final year project and it's difficult. You can't, can't, you know, play with his code and help him to program all that good stuff that you would normally do, you know, um, so. And also I think it's, it's difficult when you're already paying an exploitative amount in tuition, um, in yeah. general, I've had a conversation in, in the student movement for a very long time. And then to have everything online when you're not like properly supported. Exactly, um, that's it's very like difficult. Stuff. Yeah, because staff are also not supported. So there's like a wider conversation about how can you facilitate online classes alongside supporting the people doing the work? Exactly. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely, it's tough, definitely. Um, just to let you know, I just received a, a message from uh, Nola, one of the panelists. Unfortunately, she has um, had a like last minute appointment. So she unfortunately won't be able to join us. I'm just reaching out to Jade Lingdo and the second panelist just to double check um, whether she's uh, coming as well, um, just to let you know. Um, James, do you sit on the Deptford Town Hall statues um, consultations? No, I don't. I don't at the moment. At the moment, I don't know. Um, no, no one has invited me to to do that. You know. Okay. No, I was just wondering because. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, it's it's about like the removal of the Deptford Town Hall statues. Um, and there's a going to be like community consultations happening soon. Right, about what, so, yeah. what statue oh, they're going to replace? Are they going to replace them with other statues? The slave... No, so we're in the beginning stages of talking about it. So it's one of Garvey's demands, which yeah. is to remove the um, slave statues um, on top of Deptford Town Hall alongside the uh, slave statue, slave statue, I mean the slave ship. Um, so now there's going to be like community. Uh, community consultations with um, people around the area. So right. it's just the beginning stages of what to do. The demand is to remove the statue. So right. we're in conversation with like Historic England and a few other groups. Right, and what what are you in um, consultation with the community about? Are you What are you asking the community to think about? Removing the so, statues or, or replacing them or what? So it's removing the statues and replacing, the, like removing the statues and what to do next, because removing the statues is just the beginning stages of right. a wider conversations about also gentrification in the community, about the structural racism. So the statues won't solve it. So, um, and also what we, what do we mean by community? We're also talking about the Afro-Caribbean communities impacted by the statues. So it isn't just like an open-ended consultation. So we're mm -hmm. still developing the questions. I will, I will mess, email you separately about it. But sure. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure you've you've thought about it long and hard, really, haven't you? Right over your um, yes, over your demands for them. Do you know what I mean? Who actually owns the statues? Do we know? Is it the council or the college? It's so the building was gifted to um, the college. Oh, okay, the right. So it is That's the college, good. really. It, it is the college, yeah. But they have to go through like. Um, because it's a grade two listed building, so there's I think it's historic thing. England they need to go through, isn't it? Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. Because so it's England. considered a heritage, um, like a heritage monument. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I just received the email to the other second panelist. So the second panelist cannot come either. But I'm saying <laughs> I'm thinking we're here now. Um, so perhaps let's try to make the best of it. So thank you, James, for being here. I'm so sorry for. No, no, no worries. I hope I can help or oh, at least contribute yes. to some degree. Absolutely. You know, I, I think as well, um, it being the end of May, uh, as I'm sure um, you're aware of being a, a teacher, like most students would probably be struggling quite a lot um, sure. with getting assessments done. And as you mentioned as well, with COVID-19, um, distance learning has been extremely difficult. But... Um, yeah, I mean, Sarah as well, if you want um, um, to contribute to the conversation for free. Yeah, I'm happy to jump into this conversation. Yeah, great. I mean. That'd be great. So, well, I guess we can start by, well, just asking, I mean, um, James, have you uh, had the chance to read the results uh, that the college had um, yeah. published about the BME attainment gap? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read the results. Um, if, I just, if I just say a couple of things about who I am, Yes, so that, that actually useful. would be perfect. <laughs> that would probably be helpful, right? Yeah, of um, course. I came to Goldsmiths in 1996. 
okay, uh, as a student to do my PhD, okay. Um, and I, I'm from central London. I lived in London all my life. I went to a working class comprehensive school whose most famous alumni is the person who stabbed the headmaster. Um, it's called St. George's. Uh, and, you know, I went to an ordinary polytechnic and then another ordinary polytechnic. And then I came to Goldsmiths to do my PhD, right? And I taught at Goldsmiths for about two years while I was doing my PhD. Uh, and then I left, I left for about two years and then I came back and I've been teaching here ever since. Um, I also took what's maybe relevant here is I took a role that they created at college called the Associate Pro Warden. Um, and it was a role that was taken, was, was, was created um, it never it never really worked, but it was it was created for three years, and the idea was to try and change the power structure slightly in the college, okay, um, and 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 to include more people. Um, I did that for about three years and did a lot of work on things like student experience, widening participation. The last thing I did was a course on the BME attainment gap right bmoe attainment gap and i wrote a piece on that um and there was a guy called ebden who was head of the office for students and they identified this from a report that was done in manchester beforehand now it's it's much more well known the gap uh, and there's many, many reasons for it. So that's what I'd like to, uh, to be able to contribute. And that just gives you a little bit of background about who I am. Absolutely, thank you. That's um, like an amazing background and it's incredible to know that you've been part of the university for so long. So I'm sure you also have seen how, I'm sure in a lot of way, maybe get got worse and better at the same time. Because um, I think we can all agree that the university is a very like neoliberal um, <laughs> way to pretend to be diverse, but that doesn't really actually mirror in the way that then they behave to students, especially BME, working class students, students who don't fit, you know, yeah. white upper class, the usual people that go to university. But yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to um, discuss the BME attainment gap with you. I mean, you personally, you've been a PhD student, but I'm sure things have been very different, are di very different from what they are now, but you've also been a lecturer. So what do you think contributes to this um, wide gap that is something at the university that is actually well, responsible for? Well, okay. First of all, I think you kind of got to understand that pretty much all students that come to university are talented. Most students, regardless of who they are, I've very rarely seen students that are not talented. So most students that arrive are talented, um, but they arrive into a culture, right? And the transversing of that culture is hard. If you speak the language of that culture, if you understand the, the nuances of that culture, it's much easier for people to get by. Absolutely. And the problem is with a lot of students that aren't from traditionally white backgrounds is they don't really understand the nuances of what they walk into. And that takes time. And then there's an issue. The other thing, of course, is expectations. Now, I always remember when I first came to Goldsmiths, I used to do invigilating in exams, right? And there's a photo that I always wish I'd taken, which was of the exam hall, the great hall at exam time. And you would have on one side, maths and, maths and later maths and computing students, 95% of them would be black, ethnic minority, definitely people of color. And on the other side might be English or sociology. 95% of them would be white. So it was like a weird apartheid 
over even the disciplines that students took. And you could see it, you could sit and stand at the front of this exam hall and see all the black students on one side and the students of color and all the white students on the other side because the two courses shared, right? And I always remember seeing that. Um, I think the real challenge is how do you make a culture that's welcoming enough that everybody can flourish? Um, I don't believe that lecturers, for example, are overtly racist. I don't even believe that the, the, the term, I believe in unconscious bias, but I don't believe that they, they do that consciously. Yeah, what yeah. I believe is that the, 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 the system is gained against people, right? They don't know the system up front. And so if you play that system, to them, they're going to fail, right? So what do I mean by that? I did a lot of interviewing, a lot, when I was Associate Pro Warden, and new lecturers would come, and if they were like the people that were interviewing them, all the people that were interviewing them aspired to be the person that they were interviewing, then they got the job. Yeah. Right? If the person wasn't someone the interviewer inspired to be, aspired to be, then they didn't get the job. So if the person being interviewed went to Oxford, right, immediately, doesn't regardless of whether they're going to be a good teacher, whether they're important, whether they understand Goldsmiths, oh, they went to Oxford. Oh. Exactly. That's what you I understand mean. what I mean? This happens immediately, right? Oh, they do Russian. Oh, very important. Well, this is a computing department. Why are we even talking about this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so it's a cultural thing. And that cultural thing then brings the unconscious bias because your cultural norms drive that bias. Okay. And that, that's a big issue. I think another big issue with universities is power, right? Now, if you look at somewhere like Goldsmiths, it's kind of embarrassing. It's like you have security guards and cleaners, you know, and they're all black. And then you have senior managers and senior manageresses and, and, and you know, and they're all white. Yeah, and they all come from Oxford and they're not part of the and community. Yeah. Do you see they what don't I mean? know anything about the university. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah. and so, it's, an, it's really important that you create pipelines for change, that you create structures, I believe, that go against those cultural norms to change things. They don't change naturally, or they might do in 150 years. I've done 25 years out here, it hasn't changed, right? So you have to force change. You have to turn around and say, right, we are going to have X number of black female professors in the next three years. Then you change what things look like. Or we are going to have a person who every student can go to without, without fear or grace, who's an academic, that they can speak to about what, they, what their challenges are. Now, at the moment, if you take stuff like Gara and the like, I personally believe that that stuff came about because there was no one to talk to. Yeah. So they had to go directly to the top because their lecturers weren't listening. There was no one taking responsibility for it at a departmental level or at school level. So what are they going to do? You're going to go to the top and you're going to make a noise and good and good good for you. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So. I really think it's so important that you start, that you force new structures, you know, and a big part of that is more academics, more black academics, more academics of people of color, more working class academics. That's really important. Now, one of the things that I think is a killer is this. If you're really talented and you're a person of color, and you finish your degree, there is a high likelihood you need money. 
So if you need money, you're not going to go and do a PhD. Because <laughs> that's just more cost in your world, right? Yeah. So we've got to have bursaries, grants, support for people of colour, for pe working class people, for disabled people to go on to study for PhDs. Because PhDs are part of the gateway into academia and changing the power at academ ac academic level. So I'm a strong believer in supporting students in general. But I really believe if you really want to change in university, you've got to create more lecturers. And you only do that by supporting them on their journey. Because the smarter they are, the more pressure there is for them to leave at the end of their degree and go and work in the city or go and start a business or whatever it is. You know, and the biggest motivation, I think, for ensuring we get equity is having representation. Yeah. Under, under top not guaranteed, of but it's a big, it's not guaranteed, but it's a big way through. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's a big way through. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Ahead, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just to jump into what you're saying. Like, I definitely, I think that's the conversation of, I think, the last, like, 10 to five years has changed, right? To say, like, representation politics is, is crucial, right? But also, when we have a lot of, like, Black and POC academics and students into these spaces, the environment is still there. So you still enter a very harmful and, like, violent situation where we can't protect those academics we can't protect those students who are entering goldsmiths or these other institutions so it's to say yes representation but it's also to say the environment is inherently harmful so what yeah. do we do so that's my question to you so my question my my question or like a mm -hmm. thought is like what do we do about the environment yeah. right it's to say the environment is the problem not the people in it the people in it are just perpetuating an environment that's inherently racist yeah. I, th I think that the, the, you're absolutely right, Sarah, right? Absolutely right. But what I'm thinking is this. It's not people being in positions. It's power. Everything is about power, ultimately, right? Now, the problem is most of the black people in academia are not high enough up to have any power to change the processes and structures in front of them. And that's the problem. You, you, if you look, the black and black lecturers, black NUS start, the, the vast majority of them are in low positions within the academic structure, within the decision-making, the power structure. So if you take somewhere like a Goldsmiths, it's classic. There are, you know, there's a few black lecturers here and there. And there are a few black academics and there might even be one professor. But it's not never been. I've been at Goldsmiths 20 years. I've never seen a black warden. I've never seen a black a so, a pro warden. I've never seen, a, 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 a you know, a person of colour in any of the key decision making positions in Goldsmiths. Any of them. So, of course, you're absolutely right. While you don't have people in those positions, you cannot chat, you, you, those people don't have the power. So, the, and the other thing is understanding students' positions is important. Now, if I tell somebody in my department an experience, they're much more likely to have to listen to me than if a student tells them. Because they can't put me down in the same way, which is what they want to do. They want to ignore it and put it down. Hmm. And the problem is, what happened at Goldsmiths, if I'm honest with you, is we used to have things like diversity committees, right? At department level, where you could hold lecturers, staff members, people that created the environment to account. But as soon as free, or you weren't here then, I don't think, but we had a set of people that came four or five years ago and they just dismantled everything. They said, oh, we're going to embed anti-racism in everything we do. Now, you and I know that's a euphemism for we don't care. Yeah. 
It's a euphemism for we don't care. We don't want anyone responsible for it. Now, if you look at Goldsmiths, you're absolutely right about the organisational environment, right? Now, there are different things that go on in a university. One is teaching, right? One is research, but the other is people's relationships with each other. No one in Goldsmiths is responsible for that. No one at Goldsmiths is responsible for one of my students from a particular country or having a particular problem getting some support. We'll give them money. We'll send you to student services and stand there in a hardship queue. But we're not going to listen if you feel like you've been side-listened side to. Because no one's responsible for it. Mm. See the problem? So in a company, in a real company, like a business, nowadays you have people, whether they're HR, whether they're personal relations, whether they're, whatever they're called, there will be some people who are responsible for the well-being of everyone. Can I? It's um, on. Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I definitely see an alpha. Stop me if I'm asking another question. But I, and I'm, I'm going to throw this into like the spanner. Go I'm going to go back to your other point about like having more people in like powerful positions and making the decisions and having like a, a black warden. But what happens when we have those people who? are in those positions but don't have the politics, right? Because it goes back to like Zola Neil um, Hutton's point about not all skin folk are kin folk. So you yeah, can have, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. have um, black and POC people in these spaces, but don't have the politics, rather they have like an individual mindset. And then it goes back to um, the point about, we don't want to have a seat on the table, we want to dismantle the table. We don't want the table to exist. Mm -hmm. And so, it goes, so I, I think- I think it's, I, I, sorry to interrupt, carry on, please carry on. Go, go, go for it, go for it. No, I, I think that, that, right, there's several things you said there, right? And one of them I really, really agree with, which is they don't, if people don't have the politics, right? Now, the only way people can understand and empathize with people's politics is if they hear it. Mm. And if there's no, no communication, there's no learning, then you can't expect people to understand other people's politics. And at the moment, there's no communication. If I'm a lecturer in computing, how do I communicate with the students union? How do I communicate with the new students that are all being distributed around, around the world? There's no communication. Mm. So you're absolutely right. The other thing is, and I think that this is, I suppose this is just my view, is that when you put those people in positions of power, you don't make that nefarious. What you do is you give them particular jobs that will result in positive change. So you say, mm -hmm. yeah, we've made you professor of education for history, but your job is to make sure that history um, uh, program is relevant diverse and, 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 and produces students that are comfortable with what they're studying. Mm. Now, no one's given that job. So you're right, you're absolutely right. If you just put people in positions without giving them jobs to do, then you're just wasting your time because they do what you're saying. And I've seen it lots of times, that sort of weird singular mindset set do you know what I mean? So you're just putting people in the position and then, then they just behave like everyone else that was there. Yeah. And that's, in, in, in some respects, that's worse. Do you know what I mean? In, in some respects, it's worse. And I've seen it many times that what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about giving people responsibility for the change. Yeah. That's the key. And the problem with universities, they're really good at committees. They're really good at, uh, at groups, committees, starting, finishing, task groups. They're not good at, you're responsible for that change. And if you don't make, if you don't make that change, you failed in your job. Yeah. And that's, what, that's the problem. That's what, I mean, if we're talking about the attainment gap, 
think about this year and think about how many actual changes have taken place. And I would say none. I would say there was lots of talking, lots of committees, lots of, even some people appointed to things. But if I was a student, I was a black kid who's just come into Goldsmiths and I'm doing first year computing, or I'm a, a person of color and I've just come in to do history, no change has happened in the last year. No one's been responsible for integrating with our community. No one's been responsible for creating listening spaces. No one's been responsible for making sure that people that are interviewed are given a fair chance. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think it's about- I think, sorry. Yeah, and I, no, no, no need to apologize. And I think it's about like, what do we mean by change, right? Like, and I've come, now this is like my own politics, but I've come, I've, I've been in Goldsmiths for five years now. I did three to four years in my undergrad, and now I'm going to do two years working in the student union. And it's only little change we can do. The change we can do is to cultivate communities, right? Is to say, like, Black and POC um, students and um, need to come together to form care spaces, but also hold the institution to account. What was so great about GAVA, the work we did was we occupied the building and said, we're not gonna rely on the institution to liberate us. We're not gonna rely on the senior management to liberate us, they have to liberate. They, we have to liberate ourselves and they have to fulfill our demands. So that was our mindset. And that's a lot of the mindset the students I work with. So I work with countless black and POC students around the BME attainment gap, the care space we created, the mutual aid space that we created. But that's because we no longer rely on the senior management team to do the work. We sit on the racial justice board. I sit on the racial justice board. I sit on the depth of town hall consultations. I sit on council. All of those spaces are just formal vows to help us, right? But the what the actual liberation work that will occur is if we do direct action. If we call to make communities yeah. and I think that's the way we can look at the BME attainment gap for the last two to three years the conversation around the attainment gap is through diversity and inclusion working groups that has not worked and we know it hasn't worked um, so um, it's a matter of say we know it's not working we know the BME attainment gap has is is increasing over the years, whilst um, offers of students have said that Goldsmiths needs to fulfill, has to close down by 2025. It's not going to close by 2025 if we don't actually call out the people who are perpetuating harm. The people who are making Black and POC students not finish their degrees, leave their modules, and all having academics and lecturers on fixed term contracts, only at Goldsmiths for what, one or two years. Like for you to say you've been at Goldsmiths since, what, 1998? Nin 1996. How long have you been? Oh. 1996. So that is Hello? 96. It's nearly 25 years, right? Yeah. So I was like, James, you've been here for 96. 96. 19 yeah. 96. Can't hear you. Uh, I think um, I think she because uh, I know that uh, she's actually in a place with not really good uh, Wi-Fi. Mm. So she probably um, exited and will come back later. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean, James, you are absolutely right about everything. I mean, I think I'm, uh, you know, I actually did history as, uh, as a student at Goldsmith. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when you talk about humanities, um, like this di disparity that there is, yeah. It's true that a lot of humanity subjects are very, very much just catered for white culture, white students, European yeah. students. It's, 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 a cult, it's a cultural thing, do you know? Um, I had a really good friend of mine called Gavin, who used to be a lecturer in uh, cultural studies, right? And Gavin was gay, right? And he realised that there was a massive area of cultural studies that wasn't ever looked at because it was gay culture so he yeah. created uh, courses he created he wrote books you know and he, he created some of the most amazing things like gay museum of london and stuff like that and it's just looking at cultural things with different eyes you know yeah. you know it's like looking at cultural things with different eyes and i think that's always the 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 the, the, the challenge at somewhere like 
Goldsmiths is how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? Um, yeah. And how do you do it so it's lasting change, right? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, at least thinking of the history department, we've got people who started a MA in Black history only last year, finally, but it happened. And we have an MA for queer history. But again, these are MAs, these are postgraduate. Yeah. They're not something that an undergraduate student necessarily will be asked to do. And sure. if you talk to, you know, the big lecturers of um, the history department, mm -hmm. you can obviously tell that they consider these kind of histories to be somewhat inferior. So of course they're not, but you know, if you're talking about, uh -huh an environment of racism persisting. I mean, even I, as a professor that I had, was uh, kind of trying to tell students that World War I was only about Europe. You know, every other yeah. North African country or the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a student and you're intelligent, as you say, passionate, especially if you don't come from, you know, a cash yeah. place, maybe you don't even have A-levels, yeah our passions are curbed or are they're considered to be less when it's yeah absolutely absolutely give up. yeah 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 Ab absolutely you know i don't think i get i get the sort of um and, and maybe it works i don't know um i haven't seen it work what 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 you know if i look at what gara did and i think it was brilliant i still don't see a change in the lecturers in my department. There ain't no decisions. And so the average kid who's not in the middle of the union is getting no benefit. Absolutely. The average junior lecturer is not getting any change. And we can kid ourselves, right? And we can be in an echo chamber. But what we really got to do is we've got to think about all those people that don't speak up, those people that don't have a voice. They're the ones we want to make change for. Absolutely, that's... You know, and, and I, I think that that is a combination of people and a combination of things, you know. Otherwise, what we do is we just end up back in a situation where there are many fine words but very little in the way. No, but the, yeah, the actual experience of that one individual girl or that one individual guy just doesn't, start, you know, it just doesn't appear anywhere. Yeah, you know? I mean, my question for like one, one thing that I wonder, because you've been here so long, so you may have even seen how that has affected it so much, but the fact that now universities, you know, they're marketplaces, they're places where you have to pay for a service, really. It's not any anymore that you just go to university to, you know, become an academic. People cannot afford it. You were you were saying that before as well. If you are from a minority, even if you're really good, you'll come to a point say you do the undergraduate degree, and even if you want to continue, you feel like you can afford it because uh, you don't yeah. have the money. That's, that's why I'm. That's why I'm. I'm. I'm so um, supportive. Of, of a return to scholarships. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big supporter of that, a return to scholarships. I make, I make no bones about it because great people come through those things and they yeah. always have done. There's Sarah back. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually um, coming in the countryside, so my connection has been so bad. No, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, so... I was just saying that's why I'm such a big supporter of bursa bursaries, you know, and studentships, because yeah. I think that's where the change is. And I was saying, Sarah, that I think that if I look at my students in my department, what has changed for them in the last two years is very, very little. It's very little. It's basically nothing. Yeah. And if I look at people coming to try and get jobs in Goldsmiths, right, it's, it's nearly no, non, yeah, nothing. Yeah. But what I will tell you is this, is one guy that works for me, and because he worked for me, I could make sure that we, he, he, he applied properly to get his, his um, to get his, um, 
his contract renewed properly. You yeah. know what I mean? I knew because I know the game. Mm. You see. Now, it is true what you're saying about you take things into your own hands and that works to some degree. But what really doesn't happen is to anyone who's not in the middle, there is like no effective change for them. Yeah. And if we look at the, if I look at say a girl who's come in to do computing, you know, in a class which is 85% male dominated and, you know, male lecturers who are, who are not, nothing's changed for them. Hmm. Nothing's changed. And what I really hope before I sort of shuffle away, <laughs> that there's some real change. That, yeah. stu- that lecturers actually have to listen to people like Gara at the department level. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I want them to hear people like yourselves. Yeah. So that then they can understand what's really going on in front of them. You know, I've got students that had to rely on McDonald's Wi-Fi. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking about students with no money. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was a great, I, a couple of years ago, I had three students who were amazing. There was, a, there was a lady who was maybe from Malaysia and there was two black guys. They were incredible. One was called Valentine and the other one was, I can't remember his name, but they were incredible. They all got first. It was one crew. Now, if there had been scholarships, I could have begged those people to stay and do a PhD because they will all be stars. They were mm. all much better than I'll ever be. Mm. But there's no scholarship. So you, you say to Valentine, come and do a PhD. What you're basically saying is be, be poor for another five years. Yeah. We can't, um, you can't do that, right? Yeah, Just, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Oh, sorry for interrupting. No. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't do that. And I think it's like not knowing firstly how, not having cultural capital, not knowing how to apply, not knowing where to get funding, who to go to, not having a mentor. But it's also to say like, even if, even if we do have scholarships and we do have those like apps where we help students apply for these yep. like funding applications, what happens to students who don't have that connection or that link, right? And I feel like I'm, I'm privileged enough to ha- like for the last couple of years to have mentors but I know my friends who didn't have mentors and then it's it becomes like a very individualized like experience so I'm very more I'm for personally like how can we dismantle the institution and everyone's liberated (laughs) sorry so so I missed that last bit no that's completely fine so my point is like yes I I'm I'm all for scholarships and like funding applications and getting people on the right track. But that's like, uh, what happens to students or people who don't have that mentorship, who don't have that link, right? Yeah. Like we can only save so much if we take an individual like individual yeah. approach. So it's to say, like, how can we dismantle the institution and create community learning and create spaces where we don't have to rely on the university? I don't know whether you've seen it, James. I don't know if you've seen it, like Free Black University, which is like, um, it started like a year and a half ago where it was just a group of activists and organizers who said, we don't want to do, we don't want to decolonize the curriculum anymore because we know it doesn't work, right? How can we create community learning outside of the university structure? They got a lot of funding from the community now. So now they're going to do workshops. They're going to get community activists, organizers, academics involved in, involved in learning that doesn't have to perpetuate a system that isn't for us because this, the university structure as a whole isn't for us I say that I have a degree I work in a student union so I'm also holding myself to account but I also think scholarships and applica- funding applications and getting people inside the institution will only do so much when the university is just a small aspect to institutional racism and just structural oppression um, I don't know if that made sense, and I just thought that. No, it it it, it, it does it does make sense. It really does make sense, and I can and it's a truthism, yeah. It's a truism in a way. What you're saying, and yeah. what I'm saying is this: you have to play the same rules to win the game. Yeah, that's my experience, and my experience with my mother and. And, and being in England and being in London for 50 years, yeah. right? And watching, James, James right? Yeah. right? 
I'm sorry, but you know, they, if you want to be a doctor, you better learn Latin because all the medicines are in Latin all around the world. Yeah. That don't change. That ain't going to change in anyone's lifetime. All those medicines are in Latin. If you want to defend yourself, you better learn how to read and write. Right? Yeah. And you better learn how to read and write English law books. Because you know what? That's what the people needed in Notting Hill Gate to defend themselves. Right? And it doesn't always work, but it gives you half a chance. Yeah. The trick, the trick that they play on us is to tell us that their system isn't for us to learn. That's the trick. They did it in Africa since the 50s. In the 50s, if you look at Africa in the 50s, we were so educated. We were so together. I'm from Ghana. We were unbelievable. I can show you unbelievable amount of pictures. I have a picture on the wall of my dad and 20 of his mates all in there as barristers. But what's the picture we have of, of Africa today is kids with flies on their faces. That's not who we are. And the problem is with the create your own, when you know that over there is where the power is, you're giving them an out. Yeah. Wait, you're would giving you... them an excuse. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and for I mean, me, point. you need to be able to read that book. Yeah. If you look at George Floyd, one of the things that I thought was amazing was when I saw afterwards, after the verdict, yes. they went through all of these barristers, yeah, there were all these lawyers that Al Sharpton was thanking. Mm. Now, those people, right, were key to that thing. Now, they're learning white law. Forgive me for being so, you know, crude about it. But they're learning the system that's against them, a system that has destroyed them many, many times. And without knowing that system, they can't win that game. Mm. They can't win it. You can't win it. I want to go, when I go in a hospital, I want to see black doctors. I don't want to go in Chelsea and Westminster and just see black nurses cleaning yeah. the floor. I want to see black doctors. And if that means they've got to go and learn what the ruling class run as a system, then go and learn it. Because when that black woman's in that bed and she sees the black doctor, you make and change her life. And that's how, it, and that's how I believe it to be. So I understand about building our own things. I'm a massive believer in building our own things. But I'm also a believer in not giving them an excuse by walking away. Mm. I'm, I'm I, not going to do, yeah, I don't believe yeah. in that. Yeah, and I, I, I think, I think we're, we're kind of on the same page, but I, I think it's, it's to learn the system to destroy the system. It's, it's yes. to say, like, yeah, yeah. we don't want to be, we don't want to be in a system, right? And then uphold it, right? So in 10 to 15 years time, you have a lot of black and POC people in the system and nothing happens, right? The yeah. system is still there. Yeah, so you're, right. They, you're right, you're yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, they learn it to destroy yeah, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you right. build, then we cultivate. Yeah, you're and that's, right. Yeah, and that's so how right. I, yeah. You're so right. It's like, I'll give you a little example of where I do it. It's only you cheeky, but it's a little example. In the old days, if somebody came in through clearing, mm. right, I suddenly found myself with the power to appreciate their culture mm. and get them in the door. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So when you had this woman who didn't have formal qualifications, but had some other qualifications, I could respect those and get them in. Yeah. Now that is learning the system to break the system, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I'm really honest, right? Um, I'm a, you know, I know that a lot of working class schools have poor maths lessons and maths teachers. Yeah. There is a, there, you know, this is a big problem. So if we make a B in maths, the B end and end all of getting in on a computing degree, what are we doing? We're whitewashing that computing degree, aren't we? Yeah. Right? That's what we're actually doing. 
Instead of saying, if we know people are going to have poor maths, we need to put resources in so when they come in, we can get their maths up to the level we need to get it because we know that all them comprehensive schools haven't got good maths teachers. We just go, we want to be in maths. And then you only get white kids coming. Yeah. I mean, James, I guess this, in a sense, though, um, I mean, just thinking of other students that I met, and even my um, my own experience, when it comes to scholarships, you know, of course they should be mm. there. But say you have somebody who's really intelligent and talented, but, you know, life is what it is, especially if you do come from difficult backgrounds. You mm. may have had a F in math. You may even never have ended your GCSE. Mm. And, of course, the problem with a lot of scholarships because they're framed in, you know, you yeah. excelling yeah. in education, yeah. which you can only really do if um, you're privileged. Yeah, I mean, I think when I was talking about scholarships, I was talking more about into PhDs. Yeah, yeah. That's the area. And obviously you can't do a PhD unless you've got a certain amount of academic, you know, intellect to do the job, right? It's a, it's a hard job. So at that point, everybody who's potentially lined up for it is going to be able to play that particular game. Do you see what I mean? Now, undergraduates, it's, it's a very different thing, right? And that's yeah, why yeah. I was a very big believer. And I made one of the first foundation courses at Goldsmiths. I did that, yeah. right? And I'm a big believer in those foundation um, years, year zero, because they allowed people that didn't have traditional backgrounds to come in, prove their worth over a year, and then go and do a degree in history, for example, yeah, yeah? Or, yeah. or computing. And, yeah. and there, are, there are quite a few of them around the college now, yeah? No, they didn't yeah, exist yeah. when I first came. Sorry? I guess the problem, sorry, and then I'll let Sarah talk. Just have a, a question. It's like the problem is you start, you enter the, you know, you enter university, and I think, you know, it's what Sarah was trying to say. You come in an environment that is hostile to you, doesn't care about you. Mm -hmm. There are professors who think that, you know, your way to interact with the subject that you're doing is just a stupid way because it's not the common way. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you need to finish your BA and you need to get a master before you get to your PhD. Like the problem is that even before people apply for PhD, and this is the thing with the BME attainment gap, like people who have the talent and who are intelligent just end up failing because mm. even like during the undergraduate yeah. and, that, and that's support. yeah yeah that's why i said that you've got to change the, the 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 lecturers that's why i said because they're the only people that represent those people if you haven't got anyone to represent that student coming in the door then they're done anyway so that's why i'm saying you've got to change the lectureship you've got to change the representation you've got to change the power structures you haven't, and there's no other way really, because a, a student coming in hasn't got a voice. You know, yeah. you know, and, 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 and not even a voice, they haven't got an ally. They haven't got someone who can hear them and understand what they're really trying to say. And that's really important. And that's why representation is so important. You know, and that's why power is so important. And we can kid ourselves. I, I can kid myself and say, yeah, well, I'm going to make my own little revolution. But really and truly, that's not a revolution. Because it don't change everything. Yeah. It looks like a revolution, sounds like a revolution, but it ain't a revolution. And in 20 years time, you come back and there's still black guys in the security box and still black guys opening the door and cleaning the dustbins. And the kids across the road at St. James's never come to Goldsmiths and nothing's changed. Yeah, you know, and what I think is when those kids at St. James's, you know, St. James is at school, when those kids there are coming to our college, then we've done a revolution. And that's the job. Everything else is by the by. I can always survive. But I want to see that change. I want to see those parents that park those cars and pick up those kids not look at Goldsmiths like it's some place that they can never come to. 
And if I go in that school and I talk to those kids and they can see I look like their uncle, it makes a massive difference. It's something they remember. And, and to me, that's a big politics. So I think there's many things we have to do, but some of them are really practical and really straightforward. And, and not straightforward, but really in your face. Like you can't have an interview panel which isn't diverse. We're not having it. You can't have somebody who's not responsible for connecting with the community. Do, 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 do you understand what I'm trying to say? There's no, it, it, can't, it can't be right that students haven't got anywhere to go to until they're sitting, locking down a building. No one formally to go to until they get to that point. That's crazy. No one responsible until they get to that point. And so, you know, the BME attainment gap, I guess, requires many different, there's many different plays in it. There's some things that you don't need, right? That don't, that don't help. Why do we have names on all of our, all of, all our coursework papers? You know, why do we do that? Why isn't stuff anonymized? Why aren't we using multiple choice a lot more? Yeah. You know, they've been doing it in America for a long time. Because America's a bigger country and they understand the complexities and the problems that we're talking about. Okay. You know, so there's other places we can learn from. There are other institutions we can learn from. You know, we don't have to recreate the world. We can look and see what other people have done that works or doesn't work. So for me, I, I, I've always thought that, you know, <clears throat> if you can change the culture, then you got your two thirds of the way of changing, the, 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 you're creating that revolution. It's changing that culture, you know, changing what people come into, in a way, come into, you know. Um, Absolutely. That's what I think, I think. I think it's an amazing insight, so thank you for much, so much for that. I mean, I don't know if, Sarah, you want to add something just at the very end? Probably not, probably not. But <laughs> sorry, my connection is really um, my connection. That's fine, anyway. But no, just thank you so much for coming. And I think, again, it's, it's to say that like the BME attainment gap is there, it's present. Um, and as like a Cosmos community, it's like, it's, it's our mission and it's our goal to try to close the gap. And go through for many years. And I think we've seen the lesson. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if there's anything I, I or if there's anything I or anyone I know can do to help you, please, please ask, yeah? I just uh, honestly hope, you know, um, for next year, I think what works best every time is uh, lectures and students actually truly coming together. Yes, communication is a massive other. thing. Yeah. Communication and responsibility for change. Absolutely. You know, they're the keys. Communication and responsibility for change. Because with responsibility comes accountability. Yeah. And that's what we need. Responsibility, Absolutely. accountability for change. Absolutely. No, thank you so much, James. Um, this been been, very it's been a very interesting lecture. I'm sure Absolutely. if I listen back to it, I'm going to be very concerned with what I've said. But there you go. Not at all. Like, thank you so much. I mean, with the, you know, you have uh, made made this all worth it. I think cool. so. And um, yeah, okay. just thank you so much. I, You're I just welcome, you guys, and good luck. <laughs> good Thanks. luck. Uh, bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks so much. And um, just before we finish, I just wanted to check with uh, Arton if um, they're still on the call, whether they just wanted to discuss um, the motion um, with us a bit. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I can do. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't know how this the motion stuff works. I just. I just submitted the motion. But um, you. Shall I explain it? I can explain if you want. Yeah, so exactly. basically, how it works is at the end of the forum. Like usually, um, in in the forums, you usually have a bit more people. So that um, technically, what you can do is um, explain the motion a little bit further. So <laughs> voting doesn't actually happen during the motion, but after the mo after the forum, um, I mean the motion is released, and we'll see it anyway. And then there is a, a voting. So usually it's 24 hours, but for this one, we decided to actually make it a week for students to vote on it. Okay. And if the motion is passed, then what usually happens is that you'll meet with the student union again to try and find a way to like work and yeah. make sure that that's actually applied um, within the SU. But I think maybe Sarah, you want to explain, because like, I think anyway that the subs do well, want I mean, that to be the yeah. case, like your motion really much fits what we want yeah, to do. Yeah, so we have been um, working around like this definition for the last couple of months and yeah. last couple of weeks, which is why we haven't like officially put anything out because we were in conversation with JCOM about taking on the Jerusalem decoration rather than um, the Arhe. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, I think the toy, like we're in the same boat around. Yeah, the I'm, yeah. So I've been it's, in... So I was just saying, I've been, Tara has been keeping me up to all of that stuff. Anyway, I'm basically, I think I've done this motion, not because yes. oh, the SU needs to get on board with it. I don't know if they will. Do you know what I mean, I know you are. It's more a case yeah. of, it's a bureaucratic yeah. thing that yeah. needs doing. I think it also is to say like, it's, so rather than it'll be like, oh, sabbatical offices have implemented this and then there'll be like backlash from the senior management team. It's to say that it's been like yeah. a democratic process that the student population have voted on this. Um, so yeah, me and you, I was, I'll message you afterwards to talk about this motion and how to get like votes, not necessarily votes, but like how you can also get different societies and groups involved into the, this conversation. Cool. And yeah. Yes. So, you know, like uh, we've read it in a sense, so because there are not other students, yeah. maybe we don't even need to go through, but, um, so more or less it's, um, I'm just going to make sure that that's actually something that can be voted on from students. Um, yep. We'll have a conversation probably with comms as well to see whether we can share it. Um, did you yep. say Tara, um, Tara Povery by any chance? No, Was, no, that's Tara, she's an academic. Yeah, and Tara so Povery is an academic as well. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. I think oh, it is that ta lab. Tara Povey, yeah. Yeah, like the history. Um, oh. well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's her. It's her. Yeah, she's a former lecturer of mine. <laughs> oh. Just, yeah, very nice. Yeah, she did a lot of, uh, actually, two years ago, she did a lot of very interesting seminars as well, just about geopolitics in the Middle East. Mm. Um, yeah. Did one Can on I... Hezbollah and Hamas. So, yeah. Slightly separate note, Sarah, you mentioned that. Um, you were looking at adopting the JDA instead. The Jerusalem decoration. We haven't confirmed yeah. it. Okay. Haven't... Is there is there going to be like? I guess that's something he's got with Jacob. I'm just I just I'm a, not a fan of the JDA either. But I don't know if yeah. that's a discussed thing. No, because right now we're trying to. So it's to say, like, in one hand, like the, the, that and the RHRA definition. It kind of limits any critiques on the Israeli government and state violence. But what was like alternative definitions that we can that tackles anti-Semitism? I'm not, to be honest, I'm not, I haven't read the Jerusalem Declaration yet, and it's just the beginning of conversation. So if yeah. you know the alternatives, alternative definitions that are also apartheid of campus and like other um also like um Jewish like Jewish academics and like groups are talking about, please like forward it to me and I'll I'll read it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we have your um Okay, yeah, I, I will. I think, anyways, we. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna message you to arrange like a separate meeting and how like the SU and apartheid of campus can start working closely together, and any way oh. that we can support you. But yeah, there needs to be a conversation about alternative definitions. So when once we reject the RHRA definition, what happens next? Anti-Semitism is still on the rise in, um, yeah. in universities. So, um, yeah, it's a lot oh. of conversations. 
Allow yeah, so do I do I need to do anything regarding this motion really then What's right the, now at least? No, I think if you submit to this, it's a bit like on us now, um, making sure that uh, it's something that students can vote on. Of course, I think Sarah, like if you guys want to meet up and then like have further conversations, like you know, once I'm just getting can... students to vote, like also just yeah. Yeah, making students aware that this is that we'll do it on our side, but also for you to like make students aware, like your yeah and your friends. Um yeah. yeah, how do you how is this voted on? How okay, like yeah. what platform? Um I can quickly tell you. So where is it me? I'll give you the right name. Um I mean Sarah, I guess you'll share this in all the WhatsApp group chats anyway, I guess. I so. actually can't. I actually can't because I'm a spat I'm a sav. So okay. it's gonna be shared on Menti as a platform. Um, yeah. Okay. Usually, anyway, what happens after the forum is that the blog is released. I think as a um, yeah. like mailing list and maybe something on social media. So they're going to explain that after you know the motions ended, the emotion itself it's going to be available for votes, voting. So cool. people can go read the motion. And as I said, in this case, it's actually going to be a week, just because unfortunately, unless we get, we need kind of like up to fifty votes, like minimum fifty yeah. votes for it to for it to pass, and. Uh, because it's like the end of the year, it's, um, yeah. you know, like students are not uh, being as active as usual. So hopefully- There's um, enough people. There's enough people yeah, who will absolutely. vote for that. Right. Also to say like, if, if, if there isn't enough people, like you can still forward the motion in other student forums. Yeah. There is an end or be all. But also they formally tell you that we have academic board tomorrow, which um, is going to talk about whether the universities can implement the RHRA definition. Yeah informally not yet hasn't been announced they're pushing it back to the next academic year um to make the decision so the university is not going to make a decision until the next yeah that's what tara said because i was worried that now this one was delayed the this one with a motion in it and then the academic board it was kind of annoying that then the decision on this motion wouldn't be made before the academic board, blah, blah, blah. But Tara said she thinks that discussion will be pushed back as well. So yeah, yeah. So so it's it's completely it's completely fine. And it gives us more time to like work around it. Um yeah. over like over the summer. But yeah, we can talk about it like further. Cool. Yeah. I mean, what I'll do for sure is uh, once uh, what well, I'll probably just email you as well with the link of uh, the motion. So in case you want to share it uh, um with other people that you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll be sharing it. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for submitting it. And um, yeah, I mean, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. I'm just, I was so worried that my internet connection will cut out because it's like I'm struggling all day today, like staying in the countryside, but it, it worked. Yeah, um, I think honestly, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as um, bad as I, uh, as I think some of us may have feared. <laughs> I can um, but, learn uh, how to, I've learned how to, oh, this job has made me learn how to just like wing it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, thank you so much. Um, you. All of you guys have a good rest of the evening. And, uh, you too. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Bye.